In winter, our hills and mountains are transformed into magical white landscapes, enticing walkers onto their slopes. But when things go wrong, the consequences can be serious. Luckily, help is on hand of a four-legged kind. Keeley is in Derbyshire, finding out how specially trained dogs are saving lives. Britain's wild places, like the 555 square miles of the Peak District National Park, are some of our most inspiring natural wonders. But what happens when a walk in the park turns into disaster? Imagine getting lost in this. In 2015, mountain rescue teams in England, Wales and Scotland received well over 2,000 calls for help. If we hadn't got there in time, then it certainly could have been fatal. The first day of 2017 saw a couple rescued from blizzard conditions in the Scottish Highlands. They were forced to spend the night in a whiteout after the clouds suddenly closed in and it began snowing. With mountain weather our most unpredictable, these dedicated teams are essential. We're there as a safety net. We're there just in case it goes wrong. We're always after new recruits, but it takes a certain type of person to be a mountain rescuer. You need to be prepared to get up in the middle of the night. Rescuers deploy every weapon in their armoury to keep us safe. But during winter, when the weather's at its harshest, the only way to find stranded people, come on, are these guys. Good girl. Good girl. Here in the Peak District National Park, the local mountain rescue teams use trained search and rescue dogs to help them locate stranded and injured walkers. Today, they're training new recruits along with more experienced finders. Nick Shepherd is a mountain rescue dog trainer. Hello there, Nick. How are you doing? Hi, Ian. So who's this then? This is my mountain rescue search dog, Dolly. And why do you use dogs? In winter, you know, as you can see today with the weather, we haven't got good visibility. The dogs with the nose, they can see round rocks, round scrubs, round mountains, even if we can't see them. Dogs' noses have around 300 million receptors, and the area of their brain set up to process smells is proportionally 40 times larger than ours. So how many rescues has Dolly done then? We get called out on average 50, 60 times a year. Our most recent successful one was two nights ago. So what happened? There was two ladies from Sheffield that went for a walk over Kinder, and I think they just got the timing wrong with the darkness, and they got lost, and one of them fell into the bog. And it was dangerous. By the time we got there, it was dark, and they were very, very cold. Right in the middle of Kinder Scout. They couldn't have been any more lost if they tried. Really. And Dolly found them? Dolly found them, yeah. It's, if it wasn't for Dolly, what turned out into a four-hour search possibly could have been a 24-hour search. Perhaps the most amazing thing of all is that Nick and Dolly are volunteers. So how did you get into this? Because this isn't your job, is it? I'm a joiner by trade, and I was doing a garage door for somebody. And he had a rescue sack with mountain rescue in the garage. And I said, I'd love to volunteer for it. But I was convinced mountain rescue people had to be paramedics, not joiners. <laughs> and he says, no, you're fit, you're strong. Would you like to go out at 3 o'clock in the morning when you've been you called out? I says, yeah. Dolly, Nick's family dog, joined the team. First and foremost, the family pets, and we're mountain rescue volunteers who are quite happy to put the time in to train our dogs. With up to 70 call-outs a year, the team always need new recruits. Could you and your four-legged friend be up to the challenge, like new trainee Maya? OK, Dan, so yeah. what stage is Maya at? Uh, so Maya's at stage one at the moment, so she's just learning the game that she'll rely on to actually go out and find people. Shall we test her out, then? Give that a go. Right, then, come on, then. Come on, then. In the first stage, dogs are trained to search out and retrieve a favourite toy over a short distance. Nick's volunteered to lurk in the mist with it. And so what's she doing at the moment? She's sniffing him out. Yes. Right, Maya, no go. pressure. The camera's um, on you, girl. Away, fine. Straight to him. Straight to him. Yeah. <laughs> But for her, the, the, the whole thing's a game, isn't it? It is, yeah. They don't care whether it's a missing person. All they think about is they're going to get a reward for doing this. Once Maya becomes really proficient at this, Dan can take the next step in her training. At the moment, Maya's just barking at, at the bodies. As she develops through her training, we'll introduce what we call a return indication. So then she'll go into the body, bark at the body, then come back to me and bark at me and draw me into the body so I can find the person there as well. That's quite impressive for such a young dog. While Maya's still got a lot to learn, Dolly's already a pro. I'm about to test out her super nose. On a day like today, you 
and I couldn't see if anyone was lost in here, could we? No. Any more than 50 metres, no. And these are fairly typical winter conditions for mountains. Yeah. And it's day in, day out. Yeah, it actually makes it better for Dolly. A little bit of wind, not so much heat, and this is where these dogs come into their own. The stronger the wind, the longer that scent on the trail will become. It makes it easier for the dog. I hope my trail's a good one because I'm going nearly half a mile out into the misty peaks. I volunteered to be, quite literally, a dog's body. This is me. Nick's left this for me uh, because volunteer dogs' bodies could be out for hours, so they use these uh, to keep warm. I've only been here for a few seconds and it's already freezing. I hope Dolly's got a nose as strong as they say because I can't see more than around 20 metres away from me. Yeah. Dolly searches in a zigzag pattern. She's trying to pick up my scent trail. She found me. <laughs> Mission accomplished, and Dolly is straight off back to Nick to tell him where to find me. <laughs> Go on then, good girl. Come on then. Easy. <laughs> Yay, good girl! Well done, Dolly. Job well done. The dedication and bravery of the rescue teams and their dogs is just incredible, especially as they're all volunteers heading out in all kinds of conditions to help save lives. I know in my job just how quickly the weather can turn for the worst. So what happens if you get caught in an avalanche? We'll find out later. Hey. <laughs>